Well, while I have you before we speak with David, why don't you tell me about your jewelry line, the KMF jewelry line? Because that's, you know, it's the holidays. People are looking to shop. Yeah. There um, you go. A year and a half ago, I got connected with a friend who um, connected me with somebody who has made um, a jewelry line or a product line here or there. And uh, we just started talking and was sort of kismet because I'd never really said to anybody that I wanted to do a jewelry line. I always in my head thought, oh, that'd be fun. I'd love to have a storefront or like a website selling jewelry or go on, you know, social media and talk about different products. But I, it was never something that I, I voiced publicly, um, not even to my husband. And I think sometimes even like there's different ways to manifest things, like even just talking to yourself in your head of like things that you love and things that you desire sometimes comes to fruition. And that's what happened. Uh, and it happened quite quickly. Like we started talking a year and a half ago, like right shortly after my son was born and this really um, like lovely product line started called KMF. And um, I've been, it's been, it's been uh, a crazy couple months launching. That's, I think that's like the, probably the hardest time is like launching the brand. And then um, now we get to like breathe a little bit, but it's been really, really exciting. Awesome. Well, like I said, it's the holidays. People can buy some KMF jewelry if they're looking for that. I'm obviously dressed up for that. So I do want to, you know, obviously talk about the album Christmas songs that you do with your husband, David Foster, because I was surprised when I was reading the press release about this, that this marks the first time in 17 years that the two of you, with, aside from the mass Singer, of course, as the ice cream split. Hey, and there he is. Hello. Merry <laughs> Christmas. Happy holidays. Hey, everybody. sorry to be late. And I just we, got a haircut. I'm not dressed for the occasion. We've left our son with you look fabulous. The people he doesn't know. You look, you look fabulous, and I appreciate you guys taking That's the time. It's great to have you. Really good. Really good, didn't he? Yeah. I know you have a busy schedule as as parents, and also promoting Christmas songs and cats jewelry line. So I'm glad we were able to make this happen. So I'm glad I got you guys together because I was just asking. I was just setting up the question that this album. I was. It, your timing's perfect. That um, this is the first time you two, aside from the mass singer ice cream split. By the way, you guys were robbed. But um, <laughs> aside from that, this is the first time you've worked together musically in something like 17 years. I was very surprised to hear it had been that long. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's uh, when we met on American Idol, I was a contestant and I got a record deal and they called David Foster to produce my first first single. And then we did a lot of different shows together and charity events, but never really like that was kind of the only I did your big um, PBS, PBS special. Show, yeah. And then, uh, you know, when we started dating, we weren't, I mean, maybe some haters. The last thing on our mind was, well, was doing music. I was just going to say, maybe some haters thought, you know, like, well, oh, this mm. is an opportunity to, you know, <laughs> marry the guy who's going to make, you know, but that was never, mm. that was never on our, I mean, listen, I have not wanted to make, I think for the very reason that I've not really been in the studio with tons of producers that produce like David, I think, you know, he's a kind of vocal producer that, vocalist dream of being in the studio okay. with because they you know he just creates a roadmap for singers to follow and um and so I've never really really wanted to make any recordings because I think that being in a recording studio is a different art form in itself it's different than performing live or doing Broadway doing a tv show it's just a, it's a, such a different art form that I've always found to be very challenging and you've made it very easy for me thanks yeah we were we were perfect in the studio together at home is another story but the <laughs> studio is perfect not quite as seamless yeah well i since you brought it up cat i didn't i do want to do you mind if i'm calling you cat should i call you cat i'm calling I'm you cat because i feel like i know you because you know followed you mm -hmm. since american idol yeah, um I at all. but i interviewed you david a, a couple of years ago i remember hearing you cat in the background when you're off the record documentary came out oh so, yeah so I can't to... see you actually because I don't have my glasses on. But... Oh, oh, wait, okay. oh, right wait there. I have them right here. Oh. I have my glasses. That's all right. It was. Oh, it was... hey. Hi, uh, it's me. You had your keyboard. You were. Yeah, like, I remember like... you. So it was. I remember we talked about this a bit then. So I'd love to talk with you, Catherine, um, because in that documentary, you were pretty candid about, you know, going into this relationship with whatever trepidation or reservations you had, maybe ha something having to do with naysayers who wouldn't have said, the things you're saying about ulterior motives or just thinking this isn't going to last. There's an age difference. He's been married before, blah, blah, blah. So I was very impressed by your candor in, um, in that documentary. I'd love to talk with you a bit about, you know, 
why you were so out. It seems like you have really good communication, the two of you together. Yeah, I mean, I think we have had really good communication over the years, like, you know, um, and then the pandemic, it was a crazy time because we were newly married, really. And that was after we did the whole, so we, it feels like we've been, we've known each other so long um, as like friends and colleagues. And then we got married, but, you know, I feel like we've been married for 10 years and I don't say that in a bad way. Like I say in a good way, we've just, I think everybody in the last three years has had life move very slowly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as far as the documentary goes, that she was asking the, you know, when we well, watched I was about my communication. Oh, well, but, okay. <laughs> I was just trying to think about my, but when, when the documentary came out in Toronto, we went to it and at the end of it, she said, you know, it was good, but I really don't know who you are still. And that's when she sort of suggested to my manager and he went to the director and said, why don't you go back in and do some more hard hitting interviews about the, you know, the sort of darker side of what, you know, everybody has a darker side. Well, when I say darker side, I mean like the, the, the sort of sacrifices you have to make to have the kind of success that he has had and what kind of, um, uh you know what kind of things sort of fall to the wayside because of that right like it's like you you can only be so many things in so many places at so many at, at um certain points so like you know i wanted to know like what's the consequences of having that kind of success what's the sacrifice yeah yeah so uh she it was good thank you are the sacrifices david that you've made uh for in terms of personal relationships marriages or whatever in the past when you were younger and, and, you know, working, are there lessons you've learned from that, that you take into your relationship with Catherine, you know, uh, older, wiser sort of thing? Well, you know, you, you, uh, you always think that, oh, I could have done this differently, but you know what, every move you make is kind of a part of the tapestry of who you are today. So I probably wouldn't have changed anything, even though there was some drive-by shootings along the way. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what you were saying, Kat, about like, people may be wrongly assuming things about you know the marriage or your relationship like do the outside forces and stuff gossip whatever how do you not let that take a toll on your you know health what seems to be a very healthy relationship like do you not go on social media do you not read you know the, the, the tabloids etc i imagine any celebrity to to you know any power couple contends with this sort of thing um yeah, I, I mean, I think like I remember 17 years ago when I came off American Idol, there was a thing called MySpace and what else? <laughs> there. Um, Friendster. And, yeah, and there was, I remember all the contestants like going onto their fan pages and reading comments, and like I could not do that. I was just, I didn't have the stomach to read. I remember reading like just such mean, horrible, horrible things. Um, About all of you right yeah this was 17 yeah. years ago yeah and like but I I think like getting that sort of um negative comments like really early in my career which every artist actor celebrity gets that I mean there's nobody who comes out like unscathed um but I think it definitely you know I think because I had it when I was really younger like when I read negative comments, I, I mean, I can't say that like none of them are annoying, but they don't, they don't affect my life. Like we kind of think that we don't really it, it sort of feels like for the most part it's over. It probably isn't, but for the most part, it feels like it's over and maybe we just don't look anymore, but. Uh, well, I just think that there's, <clears throat> there's always, I mean, even if we were like an age different, that you know, made more sense to people, people would still have comments about the relationship. So I mean, I don't know why I'm thinking of Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively right now, but I'm sure, you know, there's the random person who has negative things to say about them. I mean, it's just like you, you, no matter, no one comes out unscathed. So also the other thing I like to tell myself is when you read a comment that someone's posted two days ago or something, they post it and they literally forget about you. Like they don't. So it's also just like a perspective of like a talking to yourself through the insanity of it all um but i'm not going to say that sometimes a comment doesn't like annoy me for a couple minutes but you know yeah and also i mean cares? i just thinking about celine and renee celine dion and renee yeah and their age difference was huge <clears throat> it got to the point it was strange at first but it got to the point where it was just celine and renee 
And mm. we hope that we are now getting to that point. There's so many years that we've been together now that people are just going to think, oh yeah, it's Cat and Dave. And that's the end, the end of the story. We hope. And if not, screw them. I agree with you. I feel like whatever kind of snickering or whatever skepticism that there may have been has i believe at this point died down or or at least subsided a bit but um i'm interested catherine with you talking about the myspace era and from what i recall when you were on um american idol was this was it 17 years ago it's so crazy yeah I think so. Uh, when you were on you were coming out of um if you don't mind me asking about weren't you coming out of you know uh, an eating disorder recovery and stuff and obviously just in general there's when you go on a show that big and your season of american idol was literally the highest rated season in the history of american i just actually interviewed katie tunstall at the grammy museum and she talked about when you covered her song how it like completely catapulted her here yeah it was always so nice about yeah about that but it was such a widely watched season. You know, people, I think, might forget how big American Idol was 17 years ago. You're, like I said, the biggest season. And you were so completely thrust into the spotlight when, you know, it seems like you were kind of in a fragile time. Um, um, I wasn't how, in how a, did... I actually wasn't in a fragile time. I was okay. in a very sort of empowering time where I felt like I was... Um, I was finally being free of like some, some dark times. And, mm. and, and I felt, I, I feel like a lot of times people feel trapped in their environments because they don't have, the career is not working. Um, they're, well, I, I mean, for me, it was really like, I really had a lot of darkness because I didn't feel like I was doing what I wanted to be doing. So mm-hmm. idle to me was this a great joyous experience. Um, it didn't feel I mean, I felt, it felt heavy for just like stage fright, mm. Um, mm. but no, I mean, I felt like so excited and happy and um, invigorated because I felt like my life was finally starting. Um, mm. So no, I, I mean, I, that was kind of like really when my, my adult life began, I suddenly was financially independent. Um, I got to move out of my parents' house and I was really feeling like I was in control of um uh, you know, some food eating things that I had really mm. dealt with for a long time. So it was a great, great time in my life. And that's oh, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And I'm happy to hear that. Cause I guess maybe I assumed that something could have been triggered. So I'm glad to hear that wasn't the case, but um, as you mentioned, that's where you met David Did, and didn't you, you did one of his songs you did. I've, I've nothing. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's this, this season. Uh, I said, don't sing that song. You shouldn't sing that song. Then he really? Bought- well, as the weeks go, you know, each each guest has a, you know, you sing songs from their their catalog. their catalog. So of mm, course it was David I Foster week. Mm-hmm. It was David Foster week, and I sang David Foster, and I have very very famous "I Have Nothing" song, which you know, it's a tough song, but you did it well. It's a very tough. I sing a lot better now than I did then, but um, but yeah, I mean, I think I blew my voice out that week. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm just mm. saying your songs are so hard. To um, sing. so on another note. Um, did we talk about the Christmas album yet? Uh, yeah, because, we were starting to. I'm on my knees and, yeah. and I have to oh. give it to our child and I can't stand it. Uh, okay, I wanted really to ask me. a little bit about, since we're talking about, I have nothing, the bodyguard since it's the 30th anniversary, but I uh, I get it that there is the Christmas album. Can I ask you real quickly, um, since you mentioned Celine Dion, have you spoken to her lately? Because she posted yesterday such a sad um, video about you know what she's going through health wise. I'm sure if you saw it, you know all of our hearts are going out to her. Do, have you been speaking with her or do you have any message I, for her? Anything? No, I haven't seen much of her in the last few years. Um, you know, she's navigating a lot since she lost her husband. Her yeah. life changed drastically. And she's probably, among other things, very tired. She's been a star for 40 plus years and um, and worked so hard nonstop. And maybe, you know, stress brought this on. I don't, I don't know enough about the disease, but mm-hmm. I'm sure she'll find a way. In the meantime, you know, we should all just support her decision to to take a rest. And when she comes back, I'm sure she'll be back 100% because that's the kind of girl she is. 100%. So, yes, um, the Christmas album, Christmas songs, obviously, David, you have quite a history of doing some quite iconic Christmas recordings. I mean, Josh Groban alone, if that was the only Christmas recording on your your holiday resume, that would be great one- Christmas album like one of the biggest Christmas albums literally of all time. So, you know, and you've done, you know, Rod Stewart, Andre Bocelli, Celine Dion, who we just mentioned, Michael Bublé, the list goes on. Lots of Christmas music, Michael, uh, Mary J. Blige, 
So how did you, when you're doing your own Christmas album, keeping in the family with your wife and you're doing these, it was, it's all traditional songs. Like what did you take from those experiences into making your own iconic Christmas record? You know, making a Christmas album, as I've learned from doing it so many times, it's a time when you can just relax, pick great songs. The catalog is, there's 50 great songs to pick from. You pick them, whatever mood you're in that day is the, is the way you decide to do it. In the case of this album, Jingle Bell Rock, we decided that we would do a big band version. There's no bad way to do these songs as long as you do them well. And people love these songs. And it's it's really, it's a liberating time for me. There's no stress of like having to be on the radio or having to sell anything. You just mm. make good music with these great songs. Got a great singer and I know what I'm doing and we had fun. We did have fun. What if your Christmas songs or Christmas recordings albums, besides your own, besides Christmas songs that you have done, mm -hmm. David, would you say are your most beloved to you or your, you know, the ones that mean the most to you and why? Um, I, pro I probably loved my time with the group Chicago as much as any other time I've been in the studio. It was, uh, it was wrought with, uh, you know, problems because when you're dealing with seven guys, it's, you know, when you're dealing with a group, you know, that they would have a meeting about having a meeting sort of thing. You know, there's a lot to deal with, but brilliant, all seven of them, brilliant musicians. And we made some, we made three great albums. <clears throat> so that was probably one of my best times, but hard to say. I mean, Natalie Cole, Unforgettable, mm. Bodyguard, All My Time with Buble, um, you know. But what's so your we, favorite like Christmas recording that you did besides your own? We know what it is, right? Oh, Buble. Yeah, that opening yeah. on the Buble Christmas album, and then the music stops. But did then, you have fun recording? Oh yeah, I had fun. And then then Buble goes, it's beginning to, and it's just that sounds like Christmas to me. So I'm proud of that one. Awesome. Buble's great. Buble's amazing. I'm gonna yeah, jump. Yeah, we're gonna but okay. um, Kat might stay on for one more question. Yeah, sure. Great talking it's to you again. Great to see and, you. Oh, what a relief to be off my knees. Um, I'm. He was kneeling like a Christmas angel. So, uh, yeah, I'll take it back to what you were saying, kind of when we first started about Christmas songs and I was mentioning that this was the first um, time that you and David have worked together in 17 years. Um, and you haven't done a lot of music lately. You've been focused more on acting or, and um, you know, I just wonder if this is the beginning of you starting to work together musically again, if it's reignited, um, you know, a desire for you to get in to the studio again, anytime soon, maybe do an album of originals. Well, I can, I can speak for David uh, because he has he tells everybody because people as you can imagine come up to him a lot and um ask him you know oh we should listen to this song and oh please you know produce yeah. this song for me um and he says i'm retired i don't want to produce anymore i spent oh. you know 40 years in a submarine um so this was sort of like feels like a one-off thing and as i said earlier i really haven't desired to do much recording um but you know like literally last year I think I was on a red carpet and I said like oh, I'm a retired recording artist <laughs> I said like like I said something like I'm not recording anymore because I really didn't want to I really didn't want to and haven't wanted to um so this was sort of like a spur of the moment summer uh decision that obviously is geared towards the holidays and we will finish the complete the Christmas album for next year so we will be doing a little bit more Oh, okay. recording in the studio together but I don't want to say never I don't want to say no because I guess anything's possible considering I just a couple years ago I said I didn't want to record anymore so um but you know just like with David he makes it so easy to be in the studio and not that I want everything to be easy but I want everything to be enjoyable and I want it to be great and I want to go into the studio um you know if it's not going to be great and with him I know most of the songs are going to come out great. And he always says, good is the enemy of great. And um, so I want to enjoy myself, but also have product that I'm really, really proud of. So sometimes that's easier said than done. So we will see, but there's certainly no concrete plans to do that. I'm curious why, you know, you were talking about when you went on American Idol 17 years ago and how it was kind of, you were so happy to be doing what you loved and it was this really great magical time for you and kind of the beginning of, you know, your adult life, certainly the beginning of your, you know, full on career. But what, is there anything that made you not want to retire, made you want to retire from music or what was it, you know, when you've been singing for so long, both in the studio and on screen that you wanted to take a indefinite break? 
Well, I didn't want to take an indefinite break from singing. I just didn't really, I didn't really find a place in the recording industry. Um, you know, I've made a lot of albums. I made my first album, which was actually critically really well received and sold probably about a half a million copies. But, you know, back then that was like not enough, mm. not enough to be sold off of the huge platform. And I had, you know, I had a lot of celebrity attention post American Idol, um, but I never really got like that major hit. Um, I had, you know, little tastes of success and this, that, and the other. And I had, you know, um, a great touring situation where I was, you know, going out and performing live. And so that was great. And I loved it. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that I just have been one of those singers that uh, is, is capable of doing a lot of different genres, right? Like I can sing very r and I can sing country. I did a little show called Country Comfort where I played a country artist. Mm -hmm. You know, I played a Broadway star. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different genres in which I can cover, which can also, which is great, but can also be challenging in the, you know, in the recording world. Right. Um, so it's like, what kind of, what kind of album do you want to make? You know what? I never really knew the answer to that. I mean, I feel like now I, you know, my last real, um, like artist album I made was a standards album. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably closest to who I am, you know, like, uh, like doing those more classics, which is why Christmas songs are easy and great for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I mean, when someone says, what kind of album do you want to make? I really don't know. And the fact that I don't know, and that I'm not like excited to find you know, people send me songs and I'm like, no, nope, that's not going to be good enough. That's not good. I don't want to do a good song. I want to do a great song. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes those are really hard to come by. So anyway, my point is, is that I never really felt like I had a place in the recording industry. So mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean you can't put out Christmas albums and stuff, but maybe I'll be a late bloomer and <laughs> I'll, you know, put out an album when I'm 40 or something you know, like have a massive hit like Natalie Cole did, you know, when she was later in life, but maybe David will be that secret recipe. He certainly, you know, I really, we certainly had a great time making this Christmas album together. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's long winded answer, but no, it's a, it's a great it's answer. Not a, it's not a, um, I don't feel like sorry for myself or anything like that. I, I, it's just, it's just kind of how I, how I sort of see it. I'm like very practical about you know, I don't know what kind of album I would make. Mm -hmm. And just, yeah. I, well, I'm curious, actually, since, you know, I do recall this, like I said, I've been covering American Idol since, since season one, actually, or actually your see this, your season was the first season I wrote about. I've been watching it since season one, but season five was the first season where I started covering it regularly. And so I'm well aware of how huge it was, like I said, top raid season. Huge, yeah. And it was coming off the string of, you know, we'd had Kelly, We'd had Ruben, who, you know, Ruben and Clay were both really Harry. huge. Fantasia and, of course, Carrie. And then your season came around. It was the highest rated season. But, you know, maybe a little fatigue had set in uh, from, our, I mean, it's crazy. We're in like Although season. Although Chris, Chris Daughtry did incredibly well. You're right. There was Chris Daughtry. But, you know, you and, and Taylor Hicks, I, I'm sure you actually probably sold a lot more than, than Taylor did. I actually um, don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I'll check the sound scan later. But, you know, I, I guess I just wonder if you were feeling at the time and obviously it's something you'd be over now but were you feeling that sort of pressure of like there was an expectation i think that you know the winner and and runner up usually sure, you know, of course. Did, like bo bice did well at the time you know clay oh, yeah. can obviously did did very well um just but you know yeah i guess there were there was probably a lot of expectation about what was going to happen immediately coming out of the show and how did you you know uh deal with that when you know maybe it oh, yeah, I mean, quite I, how you expect it oh yeah I'm, I mean listen if you're a new artist an unknown artist and you sell like 400 a half a million records on your first album it's a huge success I mean especially back then huge success because then the uh, the record label then puts out a second album and it's even bigger you've had chance to grow fans but yeah I mean of course when you're coming off of a platform like Idol the expectation was a million and above and so if it wasn't anything um, my son, 
So if it, if it wasn't yeah. anything, you know, like close to that, it was deemed as a, you know, failure or whatever. So yeah, of course I, I remember being, feeling a lot of pressure and um, being disappointed. I mean, I kind of also knew though that it wasn't really like, I wasn't getting the right um, lift off. So should Thanks. I let you, should I let, should I let yeah. you go? So I think I have to go. Yeah. All right. So, can to but, tear it back to Christmas real quick. Last question. I'll have any fun family traditions you have. This is your second Christmas as, as a mother, right? Yeah. Um, what did we do? Like we went to Disneyland two years in a row. And so that's kind of our, our tradition. Aww. It's so much fun during that time with all the Christmas decorations. And obviously the first year he didn't get it this year, he got it a little bit, but next year is going to be really fun. 